Greetings Namibia. Welcome to another insightful episode of On The Farm with me, Michael Medina. Now, in last week's edition, we sat down with Inspector General of the Namibian Police, Lieutenant General Joseph Shikongo. Today, we're still going to continue with him, as well as sit down for an interview with a legal practitioner who specializes in criminal law, and specifically looking at the issue of stock theft. Let's tune in. We're actually moving on to that next phase of the judicial process and how it works uh, in relation to the Namibian police force, law enforcement in particular. So uh, does the IG currently think that the, the current punishments uh, meted on, on, on perpetrators of stock theft are sufficient, sufficient enough to, to deter them from, from uh, participating in this vice? Yes, maybe what we need to look at is, is that uh, because the ultimate it's not about the, the bail. Uh, the ultimate is not only the process of investigation. The ultimate outcome, the end state of uh, his conviction at the court of law, when somebody is finally convicted. Because if you have got these cases that you are investigating, and then we don't have conviction, we can have a lot of arrest. Uh, we can have um, recovery. But if those recoveries that we are making are not resulting in conviction, because I'm sure that if you go to the registration, the Stock or Theft uh, Act, it's very clear that people, you can be punished, you can be given up a fine of 20,000, 500,000. The fines so far are deterrent, but I think the question is, how many people that you were able to convict? The conviction is the ultimate. Because once you convict a person, you remove this aspect from society. You prevent this person from committing further crime. But if there is no conviction, during that process. And that is where we need to do investigation. If we were do, we do not have a conviction. Where is the problem? Is it the quality of investigation from police? Or is it, is it the quality of, uh, of, of trial from our courts? So that is something that we need to establish all of us. So ultimate, I believe that the ultimate is the end state of the investigation. If uh, the investigation concluded, positively in a manner that the person or the evidence has been provided before the court and the court will make a ruling i'm sure that on a stock theft we've got people who are saving longer term uh, not uh, more than five years seven years ten years on on a stock theft I, I think so far to my view uh, it is uh, the current uh, fines that are given to perpetrator are fine but the question is how many then that are convicted and how many that are serving under stock or theft cases? Stock theft is a big problem. It's a big problem now it has escalated tremendously. And that is why uh, it is so uncommon now these days that uh, on, a f on first appearance should you be charged uh, with a stock theft to even get bail. I mean, I'm talking about Omaheke region, I'm talking about Oshogon Jupa, and looking at those areas, you see, it's areas that a uh, lot of funds and where they really take stock theft, I mean, uh, stock, um, livestock uh, husbandry really very, very serious. Uh, it has, it has increased tremendously and you will always see even uh, in the media where the, the community is crying that no, no bail for uh, stock theft offenders and you know, and that is why the definition is even so broad that it's not only about you stealing a goat or a, or a cattle, it goes to the product also, you know, they slaughter, they slaughter cattles and goats and sheep and just sell the meat and so on, you will even see some of them hang, having, uh, <laughs> hanging them on the trees, in the bushes and so on. So it has really become a big problem and a very, very big concern uh, to the farming industry. If I'm a farmer, I need to ensure that um, all my head, okay, the whole head is actually properly registered so that it's, uh, I can actually account for all my animals on, on the farm. And then that is going to be um, maybe given to the uh, authorities so that if, if need be, or if somebody comes in and steals something, at least I've got a record which is tangible and then I can actually report. So in essence, I can say the police also, they are doing their rounds since this top left in so many areas. They also have to at least um, make sure that they enhance or uplift the security in most of the farming areas. 
so that at least there's maybe 24-7 surveillance in all the farms. Okay. Uh, uh, Inspector General, the biggest or the largest uh, the largest stakeholder that the Namibian police force depends on is definitely the community. Uh, let's talk more about uh, community policing. How uh, can that be enhanced, uh, that, that relationship? Let's talk a bit about that relationship between the community and the Namibian police force. Uh, there are so many forums. We have what we call the police reservist. Like one of the issues now, under that, we have uh, police reservist that are uh, uh, I could read the police in terms of chapter chapter 11 operation manual. And they are working very well. We, they are appointed by the inspector general, and uh, most of them are farmers. In Ochuarongo, we have a fan uh, who is now the the coordinator, the regional coordinator of the reservist in Ochoa in Ochoa region, he's a chief inspector. He's a farmer by himself. We have a Robert Grillman, he's a farmer, who is a deputy commissioner by rank, he's a national coordinator. We even allocated him a vehicle uh, in order to so that he's able to move around in the farming community. He's able even to mobilize more farmers. Let's we talk of a farmer who is a police reservist who is based at Nina, which is about 255 kilometers from here, or somebody who is at somewhere else, and then where the service of the police is not ready available at a particular time. So these people are able to wake up in the they've got. Uh, uh, they've got capacity, we give them training. So in most cases, we go there, we find the suspects already arrested. We have what we call the women, men and women network. And I think this is what we need to do to ensure that men and women network are all over the country. And if I was in Angwena recently, and the men and women network in Angwena, led by Nestor Tobias, very effective. And these are the people that we can send out to give us the information, some of them were living in the village, because this man we said, open an account. You should be able, wherever you are in the village, you will be able to call the police and said, I have a revolt, I have a Hawaii Hawaii, or whatever, what you call this, this airtime. Uh, yes, they will be able to call from the villages to say the police are with this village and they with somebody moving with animal. We are suspect this, this animals are, are stolen. We were even able to engage them and said, look, when you traditional leaders, when you see a single um, animal uh, being moved by somebody, can you stop that somebody and ask, where is your papers? We are taking this animal. And we said, police officers, when you move around, stop and check this person moving the, along this road. Does he have a paper? Is the owner of this vehicle, of these animals? I think those are some of the measures. So the issue of uh, community policy is working very well. And, and really is yielding very good result. Most of our success today are dependent on the, on the groups that we have established as an organization. Stock theft is one of the offenses that can easily be committed. Uh, and I was looking at one judgment uh, that actually led uh, to the amendment of the, of the Stock Theft Act, where the court also emphasized that, I mean, in Namibia we enjoy uh, um, uh, freedom, uh, freedom of uh, traveling and liberty and so on and also uh, it is impossible it is impossible to expect that the, the cattle haters or the farmers should actually cut their livestock 24-7 I mean it's opening the kraal, taking them to the water point and they should be out there on the field uh, grazing so you cannot monitor them 24-7 and that makes it easier for the thieves uh, for, uh, to, to, to steal uh, uh, stock, uh, livestock so that is why the uh, sentences are so heavy so that actually to deter the offenders because yeah you are there walking in a field it's very easy for you to grab one coat and slaughter it and take the meat home but you should know that as easy as it is to commit that offense age it comes with a hefty sentence to, to be very honest i don't want to say this reg region is better than the other mm. but obviously if you go to areas where the there is minimal uh, farmers in stock of theft obviously the crime is down you can drive from here to go to Sources Flay, you go to, to Seslim, uh, you go to, those are more lodges. Uh, you go to Kavango, west, Jivundu there, uh, to go towards the way, towards the border of, um, of, of Botswana. It's, it's, more, it's more lodges, tourists. It's a tourist areas. What's happening there perhaps is the breaking in the lodges, uh, 
housebreaking, those are the things that you find, rather than stalker theft. But if you come to the area of Ochujonjupa, you come to areas of commerce, you go to Oshikoto, you go to Kavangos, you go to Angwena, Umsati, they were also talking about the dynamic, you go to Omaheke, you also talk about the, dy the dynamic of the borders. You, in Zambezi today, stock of theft is like the other, the other side of Zambia, the livestock are not branded. And sometimes in some, some instances, they are not even air tag. So at this point, they can move the cattle, bring them into Namibia. In recent cases, we arrested some, some teachers, a suspect, because they send these younger people to go and bring cattle from neighboring countries and they bring them in Namibia. And these suspects have been arrested. It's before the court. Then we are also talking about in Angwena, uh, Omsati, where cattle are just stolen from Namibian people, they move it to close the border. I think those are some of the dynamics. The legal drafters have looked at all the options. That is why they define, first of all, they specifically define stock to include most of the animals that we deal with or that we keep at home for, for economic purposes. Um, from horses to donkeys to uh, domesticated ostriches or any game that is can be that that can be tamed and be kept at uh, uh, domestic areas and so on. But then also to secure, ensure that we don't do away or get away with uh, receiving stolen stolen uh, 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 livestock and so on. They look at all that that when you to uh, transport uh, uh, livestock no transportation of, of, of livestock between sunset and sunrise. They also look at receiving livestock without proper documentation. So also to deter you from not saying, ah, they will know that I was never at that farm, so I couldn't have stolen that, uh, that, that, that goat or that cattle and so on. But I just received it. So it looks at what should you have in your possession, what should be provided to you, should you be receiving livestock and so on. Uh, apart from when you are buying them at a public auction where it is now also regulated differently where you know that you know it must be branded and so on but for me to just found you in the street and say please buy this is mine and so on but let's go and loot it somewhere in the field where nobody can see and so on so there are really other offenses that emanate also just uh, from the from the egg so it's not just the mere stealing you physically stealing but receiving not accounting for um, and not having proper documentations um, to excuse you or at a later stage, you can also then be, uh, be found guilty of an offence. Personally, I would say, supposing I'm a farmer, I mean, I put so many resources into my own farming for the benefit of the nation, I mean, commercial farming and so forth, supplying butchery and so forth. So basically, if somebody comes to my farm and then uh, something which I've put in place for a couple of years and then you take a few seconds to enrich yourself, you need to be punished for that. So basically, sent to jail for not even less than 10 years. Um, obviously the courts and the legislators uh, observed or realized that there are some loopholes that needed to be that needed to be uh, catered for and to be provided for specifically. Uh, obviously when you go to the court you see the defenses that the people raise and so on and when you look at the act you see that they were not uh, provided for, not catered for, so that is when, what prompted um, the amendments. Uh, and also the development in the court cases, people challenging the hefty sentences uh, and also uh, um, attacking the act on the constitutionality of some of the uh, sections and so on uh, and then that prompted that uh, the act to be amended and also one also look at the hefty sentences uh, the, the public outcry and, and, and people thinking that uh, you know this is our uh, uh, source of income, especially in communal areas and also the commercial farmers, uh, you know, the outcry they often how it was um, uh, killing them economically. Uh, that also uh, played a role and influenced the legislators to come up with uh, uh, strict punitive measures uh, for stock theft. Uh, you know, I, I'm a lawyer, so sometimes we need these people also as clients and so on. <laughs> but uh, just know that uh, stock theft, uh, there is no option of a fine. And also you granted bail on first appearance, um, uh, the chances are very minimal because of, of a public outcry. So rather be safe and stay away from that. Any final remarks regarding uh, the issue of stock theft within Namibia? Any parting remarks to, to the Namibian nation? Yes, the, my, my final remarks, is, um, indeed as I'm concluding, is just to appeal to all farmers 
uh, whether it's the communal or commercial farmers, just to, to take measures of ensuring the counting of their, their livestock on daily basis if possible or weekly basis, just make sure that they patrol, just make sure that they go to the emergency numbers of the police, their regional commanders, their station commanders in the area. I think that was, that's the way to go. Because sometimes you will find a farmer who is situated in Tomatako, whenever the, he lost the animals, the first thing is to look for the number of inspectors general who is in Vendo. But then there is an immediate person, the police, of, police at the Mangete Jun, or at the Chunque, or at the Omatago police post, or Roy Duck. Now you try the regional commander in the Nochozonjupa, the somebody will call Windu. By then, when you try to call, get the regional commander, regional commander, look for the regional commander, um, it's, it's a delay. So if you are people can just have the images numbers, the number to call, I think that's, that's, something, that's something that we need to do. The other thing we are also trying to, to do is to, in fact, to decentralize our, 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 our anti-stock theft units, the subdivision. In, currently, they are in some of the regions, not all the regions, but we have some that are at the regional level. There you have it, Namibia. It's quite apparent that stock theft is a real scourge within Namibia. It must be hands-on deck as you fight this scourge. Until next time, let's bye-bye.